The current state of the fragile Democrat coalition, Israel-Palestine protests continue. After the October 7th attacks on Israel, there was a near constant threat from Iran that any response from Israel against Gaza would initiate Iran and its proxies to widen the war against Israel and the U.S. There have been some attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, and there have been some sporadic attacks between Israel and Hezbollah in northern Israel and southern Lebanon, but for the most part the attacks are not overly serious, serious and local in nature. The external threat of a widening war seems to be subsiding, but the West is under tremendous pressure due to the internal internal protests over the Israeli-Palestinian divide. This internal divide would permanently change the face of the Democratic Party in the U.S. more so than any Iranian response. The U.S. is not the only country that is facing widespread anti-Israeli protests. There are near constant protests in France, the United Kingdom, and Germany, as well as other countries in Europe. There have also been pro-Israeli demonstrations, but often these are counted with larger anti-Israeli protests. The U.S. Has a unique, is unique in that Jews and Muslims, as a demographic, are solid democratic constituencies, and thus the protests have put the largest political party in the U.S. under tremendous pressure. The Democratic Party is made up of constituencies of various identity groups that have their own interests and often divergent with each other as a coalition against the Republican Party positions. The, view, the Jewish population has been a legacy constituency of the Democratic Party, and is well established in its position within the party. The Muslim population has been increasing in the U.S. and it's settled on the Democratic Party, partly due to the false accusations that the Republican Party is against, is against minorities and its strong Christian influence. There are other factors at play, but those are topics for another day. The traditional Democrat tends to be a strong supporter of Israel, and that is best represented by President Joe Biden and Senator Chuck Schumer of New York. The Muslim bloc tends to be represented by newer and more energetic Democrats and are vocally represented by Representative Rashida Tlaib and Representative Ilhan Omar and is pro-Muslim, anti-traditional values, and a large population is virulently anti-Semitic. The current crisis in Israel has, has highlighted the different priorities and has torn a divide in the party. There was a pro-Israel demonstration in Washington, D.C. this week as well, and some smaller ones nationwide. These are mostly peaceful and lawful. On the other hand, the pro-Palestinian demonstrations have turned into protests. They have halted traffic and commerce in New York City, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco, and after them being the most notable cities, but the pro-Palestinian demonstrations are present throughout the country. Alarmingly for the Democrats, the most violent protests are directed towards the Democratic power structures. Tlaib led one protest in the Capitol Hill complex, and within a week there were protests directed against the White House perimeter with attempts to breach the gates, and one protest at the Democratic National Committee headquarters in Washington, D.C. that trapped Democratic members of Congress into the building. The traditional Democratic politicians are supported by the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee, AIPAC, and the anti-Israeli and anti-Jewish protests have created a response from AIPAC. They have, they have committed to spend $100 million to defeat the members of the, quote, squad because they're vocal anti-Israel and, in, in some cases of Tlaib and Omar, their anti-Semitism. Alan Dershowitz, a lifetime Democrat, has threatened to leave the Democratic Party and that other Jewish supporters of the party should consider leaving. The fissure is real and in motion, and unless Joe Biden can find a way to end the war soon without alienating either constituency, the fissure will be permanent. The other danger to the party is that if, the, if it does split, the members of the coalition that make up the party will have to decide what side to go with. For example, where does the feminist abortion rights activists, the LGBTQIA, African Americans, and the Hispanic Americans will have to make a choice on which side to support and how the Democratic Party cobbles itself back together? If the Muslim side forces the Jewish and Israeli supporters out of the party, Will they be the new power brokers of the Democratic Party? Will the other constituencies accept that? Or will the Muslim faction be willing to take its place in a new non-Jewish party? The nature of politics in the Democratic Party that if one wants to have influence, they have to stick together in a faction to maintain relevance. So entire factions may have to decide as a bloc where to move their support. In the end, Iran did not need to strike back against Israel and its supporters and risk its security. 
They can sit back and watch the turmoil that the Palestinian supporters, who are not all Muslim, cause violence and discourse in the nation and paralyze the ruling party. The protests are precisely directed and scaled to the point where they are overwhelming. And this takes coordination and planning, which takes resources. So who is providing these resources? The protests of today look very much like the protests of 2020, just with different flags and slogans, but both were directed at, a part, at the party in power at the time. Did the Democrats facil- facilitate and encourage the 2020 protests, but they did not su- but to give support to something they cannot control? That's the question for this for today.